I'm Tracy Baxter and this is Record News Watch. Those who want to see a gambling casino built in Sullivan County are hoping things will be different this time around. Governor Patterson was scheduled to be in Monticello late Monday afternoon to formally sign a land deal that could pave the way for construction of a casino off Route 17, exit 107 in Bridgeville. On the table is an agreement with the Stockbridge Muncie Mohegan tribe that would provide state support for its casino proposal proposal in exchange for settlement of a long-standing land dispute in upstate Madison County. The tribe would give up its claim to 23,000 acres in Madison County in exchange for 330 acres in Sullivan County at the site of the proposed casino. The deal is a long way from being a done deal. The Federal Department of the Interior will have to sign off on it and will also have to survive a series of expected legal challenges. Another indictment has been handed up in the case of Jesse Green, the Orange County man accused of killing his father and injuring his mother during a rampage inside the couple's Tuxedo Park home back in July. Green has been named in an additional indictment, this one charging him with second-degree burglary and petty larceny for break-ins at Tuxedo Park homes last summer. Green is under indictment for first-degree murder and second-degree assault. Authorities say he killed his father. 66-year-old Daniel Green inside the family's home on Lookout Stable Road. 62-year-old Jacqueline Green was injured and then tied up when she tried to intervene. Elsewhere, Port Jervis police have arrested a Pennsylvania man following an alleged sexual assault over the weekend. 31-year-old Timothy Ward of Johnstown, PA, is facing charges of first-degree rape and criminal sexual act for sexually assaulting a Port Jervis woman inside a multi-family residence on Pike Street Saturday morning. City police added the charges of DWI, aggravated unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle, and marijuana possession after Ward was pulled over. He was being held on $25,000 bail in Orange County Jail. The counting was continuing in Dutchess County today for an area political race where a winner hasn't been declared and it could ultimately come down to just a handful of votes. At stake is the 100th District State Assembly seat, now held by Democrat Frank Scartados. He was trailing former Republican Assemblyman uh, Thomas Kerwin by 205 votes after all the absentee and affidavit ballots were counted in the Orange and Sullivan and Ulster County portions of the district. 670 absentee ballots are being counted in Dutchess, where Scartados carried a majority of the election night votes. That's fueled speculation that the final vote count could be extremely close and that the race might come down to a legal challenge and a judge's ruling. Well, if you're planning to take to the air for the upcoming Thanksgiving weekend, your trip to have dinner with the relatives could become a real nightmare. A protest is in the works for Wednesday, the busiest travel day of the year. That could make flying even more of a hassle. A number of people upset with the new security boarding measures at airports that include full body scans and invasive pat-downs have taken to the Internet to put together a national opt-out day calling on travelers to boycott the new tighter security measures. Officials with the American Society of Travel Agents are worried that if some passengers refuse to submit to the new procedures, it'll seriously disrupt air travel on the day before Thanksgiving. And it's a time of great expectations in the city of Newburgh, where the former Armory building will soon become a community center. The so-called Armory Unity Center is coming together following months of volunteer work to renovate the old building. And the project got a major boost from local businessman Bill Kaplan, whose foundation donated $125,000 to the cause. The opening weekend festivities, including dance demonstrations, basketball, and soccer clinics, We'll kick off this Friday at 1 p.m. with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. Well, Tuesday looks like a mild weather day, but uh, you won't need a pair of sunglasses. It'll be cloudy with a chance of late-day showers. The high temperature should climb into the lower 60s. The forecast for Wednesday includes a mix of sun and clouds, with the region's high temperatures topping out at around 50 degrees. Make Record Online a frequent stop to get caught up on all the breaking news and get complete details in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. 
For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.